Yeah, like my phone did on me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FPTM, Fire Photography. We're here for our second interview pertaining to fire buffs and fire ground photographers. Today, we are having the pleasure of interviewing Ron Briggs somewhere out in the Midwest of the United States, lots in the beautiful green forest of Wisconsin compared to where we're located in the middle of the desert where it's sidewinders, Gila monsters, <laughs> desert turtles and all that good stuff. And um, real close to California brush, uh, brush fires and getting their smoke. Okay, Ron, go ahead and... Um, Give us uh, your name. Let's start from the beginning. Ron Briggs, fire uh, photographer, Falls, Wisconsin, covering pretty much mm, two thirds of county at times. But, uh, doing photography, work full time job outside of departments. So, on two departments in the area. So you're a fire photographer for two department or one department? On uh, two departments on the roster, and then covering a third, uh, hit and miss as I need to for. Uh, Fires and major event stuff, and also fundraising events and stuff like that, community events. Okay. Now, uh, how many years have you been um, doing the fire ground photography? Just started my 13th year here, uh, middle of last month. Oh, cool. So and, how do you, time. <laughs> and how did you get started? How, what, what got, let's start from the beginning, as in how you got involved in the whole thing into where you are now? Oh, I've got family in the fire service. My dad was in it was back in grade school, you know, and then my brother got into it and I got into it, you know, and brother went full fledged fire department stuff when he was still in high school, his junior, junior year. And I didn't want to go full fledged fire, but I wanted to keep involved as much as I could and wound up doing the photography aspect and I have friends in the department, a lot of departments, like a lot of people I know yet still, and even though some are retiring on me now. And there was a fire back in 2008, or correct, in 2009, August 2009, a few blocks from where I was living at the time. And I was like, well, this is a major fire. I knew the history of the building that if it's going to be a fire, that's going to be all heck is going to break loose if it doesn't get stopped. And so I grabbed the camera and ran down the scene instead of trying to drive there. I just ran down the four blocks down the sidewalk, get there quicker. Hit the streets out by four blocks and got there. I stood across throughout the time, photographing it. Fire chief showed up, said, so I need to copy the photographs. I already knew that, you know, I got you covered. Six days there, they had another fire. And I drove to that one, you know, a little, a little further away. And the chief was on duty at the time. So like, well, I already knew he's going to be on the duty. So like, I'm going to go with some photographs of him on the call in this one photographed it he mentioned he's a need to copy them also I'm like okay two is there gone that fire apartment and sat the computer with them two cds one cd of each call and he decides to uh, say pull up a chair and sit here as i go through these i'm like oh boy here we go photo by photo from each calling with every photo i took and then so i know your family history and that and the background to that and all of that and that you're here at our Explorer Post when we had it when you were in high school. And I'm like, correct. And I was the first one to graduate out. And he's like, we got a serious question for you. We can't compensate you, but we get other perks we can give you. Would you be a photographer? And I said, yes. So August 14th, 2009 is where it all officially began that way. But the call, first call is August 6th, uh, 2009. That's the unofficial date. We've been doing it ever since. And I know they're uh, doing for that department, but I do it for two other ones in the county. But now they got a new chief at that department a little over a year ago now, and things are working out where now I'm getting access to some of their calls again and everything. And so they're trying to, the guys down there are pushing to get me back down there now in that department. Oh, okay. Hey, that sounds uh, pretty good. Now, through all that uh, you mentioned and being selected and so forth, and you just gave a hint about, Starting to do some photography after Sir um, uh, Chief left, and apparently there've been some changes. Have you had any trouble with other agencies while performing your uh, your audio cut out? Other department. Oh, there you go. I had some issues when that other the new chief took over. The, between that chief that I started with and the chief that's there now, 
had some issues with deadly burn for uh, seeing access, even as I'm with my department's just by mutual aid, or he didn't want me on scenes. And then I had some scenes where law enforcement didn't know me and tried to block my access until I told them who I was and got the uh, department members involved. And then other than that, there's been no issues otherwise now. It's been fairly good lately again. Oh, okay. Hey, now I am curious as in, in your area, I know how they do it in my area, and I know how they did it in California where I started doing my fire photography. Um, how do the agencies um, or other departments in your area do crowd control when they do have a structure fire, accident scene, uh, et cetera? That depends on where it's at in the county. That depends on what agencies are involved. Um, because right now we don't have enough law enforcement to kind of cover some of the stuff yet. Yet still, we're still short of sheriff's officers. We're still short on state troopers yet, even. So I mean, we're really, if you're out in the countryside, you're slim pickings. You're pretty much left on your own to try and cover your own scene control, unless it's in a very emergency, the weapons involved or something. Then law enforcement will respond, but because they're really busy, sometimes we've got two officers for our sheriff's office covering the county. So we get two calls in each in the county because you're on your own basically for a scene control for that. I mean, otherwise, if they're not busy, then they'll come respond to the scenes if it's out in the county because not all the municipalities in the county have law enforcement for their own agency. So if you're one of the municipalities that has law enforcement, then they will pretty much come cover for you if they're not busy on the call. I'll be right back. From all days, we didn't get no notice. They're going to be tearing up the street out in front, and she barks at the wind. <laughs> <laughs> but when I got up to go tell her to be quiet, she's standing right by the door of the office barking at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry about that, that little That's interruption. Fine. So, Now, you would consider yourself as a fire photographer instead of as a fire buff, correct? Correct. In your opinion, what is the difference between a fire buff and a fire ground photographer? A fire ground photographer like myself, we're actually active with the departments. Some it, some of them are uh, not on roster in the country, but a lot of us are on rosters for departments then. Fire buffs are pretty much those that go to scenes, not really on a roster for a department or not like that. They know members and go on calls and stuff like that and just photograph for them and do it that way where I'm actually actively involved with departments on rosters and departments even go on calls and everything and document it and help out where I can. Oh, okay. Now, while you're at a scene doing your photography for the department and or work in this scene, do you see any other individual, um, other than the look loo with all their cell phone, but one day you see showing up uh, to most of the calls that might be close to them, you know, a familiar face every time, like they might be doing fire buffing? Nope. I'm pretty much the only one in the county right now that's the primary person doing a lot of this. Oh, so you, not, you haven't seen anybody in a crowd showing up to oh, wow, let's go over there, like chasing, ambulance chasing, you know, listening to the scanner or that. Nope, not in this county. I mean, depending on where it's at, if it's in a city like that, you may see one or two people, depending on which neighborhood it's in, because I know some people in different neighborhoods that have been, like, neighborhood people have been there forever, you know, and if you go in the county, it's very hit and miss if you see something like that. Oh, okay. Calls I've been on. Now, how rural is your area? Well, that depends which part of the county you're at. Because in where I live in the southwest, southern part of the county, basically south central part, it used to be rural for the most part. Well, now it's pretty much urban with the little rural and edges. And you go east about 20 miles and you're sudden, 
go outside the village about four miles each way, and also it becomes true countryside, and there's nothing between us but farms then. Oh, and if you okay. go north, past the other area I cover for another department, between the city and that is a 12 mile gap, and I would say half of that, at least half of that's countryside. And then you get outside that little response area past the little suburb, and it's countryside again for many miles up the road for almost 20 miles again. You go west of where I'm at, about six, eight miles, and you're in the countryside again through the rest of the county. Now, which county, which county um, you say you're in? I'm in Chippewa County. So we're the third county Chip again Chip from West Western County? Of Wisconsin. Chippewa County, yep. C H I P P E W A. We're the third county in from the western border of Wisconsin from the uh, Mississippi River, St. Croix River, right there. Okay. So we're yeah. uh, pretty Let me go country. ahead and do a quick uh, share of a screen here. And I do believe you can see my screen right now. Yep. So, yeah, I just type in the county that you're in. So this is basically um, the That's county that you're my, in that you cover all that. I cover over half, I cover about half the county for sure, yes. Oh, about half of the county. Okay. I, I cover about half the county, yeah. Because if I, go on mutual aid, if I go on a mutual aid call, I cover pretty much half the county regardless then. Okay, um, I know there's a whole bunch of little towns in there, and it look pretty much everything's not close to each other. And um, I mean, looking at the scale down here, of ten miles, you know, one inch is about ten yep. miles. So we're looking at about a good twenty-five to thirty mile between Cornell and Bloomer. Yep, about it's uh, twenty-six miles here. Yep. Yeah. So basically, in that whole area there. If you can answer, I don't know if you could or not. I know okay. I'm with a volunteer fire department, and you're with two of them. If you want to zoom in, and I can get to give you very detail that way. Zoom no, in. Okay. That well, there. before we do that, each one of these towns have their own departments, either paid and or nope. volunteers. Lake Cali is actually uh, village of Lake Cali, but it's also a township uh, bordered on. But there's actually. Two stations right in that area alone between Halley. Halley has a station. There's a station in the Township of Lafayette, which is east of there. There's a station in Cadott, a station in Boyd, a station in Stanley, a station in Cornell. Bloomer there has a station. There's a station between Halley and Elk Mound that's called Wheaton. That's actually their own township, but Wheaton has their own station now. They broke off of the uh, department. Eagle Point has their own station. Anson is covered by Jim Falls, where we're considered Anson Fire Department. Um, up between Albertville and Bloomer, partially between the Township of Howard, they have a station. Bloomer has their own station. New Auburn has their own station. Now, are they paid or volunteer or combination? Anson is the only volunteer, two volunteer stations left in the county. All the rest are now paid on call. Um, City of Chippewa Falls has a full-time paid department, three shifts a day a week, or three shifts on uh, rotation. So 24 hours on, 24 hours off rotation that way. They have two stations in the city of Lowen. Lake Cali has one station, which we cover. So Halley, Township of Howard, and Township of Lafayette are considered Chippewa Fire District. And they have three stations combined between the yeah, three townships in the village of Lake Halley. And that's paid on call volunteer. We also have paid uh, full time paid fire administration for a chief, a paid fire inspector, a paid EMS, top EMS person, a paid tank inspector who covers a good chunk of Wisconsin for uh, tank inspections and that. And then paid EMS division part for all their are paid uh, part time and some full time personnel there. So Kadab how is paid on call. Boyd is paid on call. Stanley is not paid on call. Bloomer is paid on call. Cornell is paid on call. Cornell actually has a separate fire department and separate EMS department. And both those are uh, paid Oh, on you said Cornell? Department. Yep, Cornell up there. Oh, okay, there it is. Yep. They have two separate departments up there. One is EMS and one is fire. They're totally separate. And they're oh, EMS so they're not is, combined. They're, they're... they're totally separate up there. 
do they share the building or they're on nope, their own building? buildings? Same with Boomer up there in Boomer. Their prayer parent and their amulets are two separate entities, also two separate buildings for them also. Okay, and we're talking about this one here, Bloomer. Yep, that's two separate also. Oh, okay. And their ambulance covers New Auburn for response for their EMS up there. Okay, so basically, Bloomer, which is here. Yep. Their ambulance will travel almost 25 to 30 miles to New Auburn. Yep, and they will cover halfway between New Auburn and Cornell also. Because they're the only agency up there that way. And from there to here? Uh, northeast of there a little bit, where it's Cornell there, where it says Cornell. Right, you got Bloomer there and you got Yep, that's uh, the, Cornell. the cabin is the cabin bridge, which is halfway between Jim Falls and Cornell. So they'll cover yeah. half that. Uh, let let, let me ambulance. zoom in a little bit here. Yep. Where, okay, you still got Bloomer over yep. here. It will cover pretty much up to just east of Highway 124 or 64 intersection there for Bloomer Ambulance. So right where the like pond is, right there, right by the cursor, right there, there's pretty much their cutoff line for Bloomer Ambulance. Wow. So Bloomer that's, Ambulance covers that's a, a lot large of, that's area. a lot of coverage. Yeah. That is a lot of coverage right in there. And I'm not zooming in to show the density. And that's of, a really rural area right there in the county. That's all rural area up there. Yeah. So, so if you get a fire up there, you're 25 minutes, half hour before you get trucks on scene, basically. By the time you get people going to the station, get the trucks in, then respond. You're you're half hour into the call already. Yeah. Now you said you were part of Hanston. Uh, Hanston, which Hanston. is Jim Falls, right there. Hanston Fire Department, which is up in Jim Falls, right there. Yeah. Okay. Here's Hanson. Yep. So from Hanson here to yep. Bloomer, that's a good distance and no direct route. Yep. Township Hanson is pretty much the whole southern part from Jim Falls south, and a little bit north is our coverage area. Also a little bit north. Our station is right in Jim Falls, which is where our station is at up there. Okay, so uh, you got one station in Jim Falls. Yep, I'm on that department there in Jim Falls, which is and Hanson Fire Department. Which okay, so covered. Jim Falls and Hanson is the uh, same department? Same department, yep. It's the village of Jim Falls, but it's the township of Hanson. So it's Hanson Fire Department that way. That's a uh, distance. Yep. And by zooming in and looking at the major streets. We don't have very many major streets up there. We got two major, pretty much three major streets up there. Okay, so this. O is a uh, major street. S is a major street. Oh, so there's no little. There's some country roads road between here and there. There's some, there's some country roads there, but nothing for a main road. Our so, main roads in Jim Falls Anson there is Coney S. Coney O, Coney K, and Highway 178 are the main routes for Anson Jim Falls area. That's it. It's, uh, it's all country roads. Well, out of curiosity, um, you could go ahead and answer this right now or not. Would the department mind if uh, we could zoom in to where they have one of their stations to see how the station look? Yeah, if you want to go up to Jim Falls up there, or, yeah, Jim Falls, the small station. It's not very big. Oh, all right. I like looking at small station. Okay, Jim Falls. <laughs> okay, I lost Jim Falls. Here's Jim Falls. Yeah. Boy, that's a that's a distance. Yeah, it, it's uh, about 18 miles from me where I live at the south end of Triple County. To get up there, it's about 18 or so miles one way. Okay, well, out of curiosity, um, what is this post of speed limit for you guys out there? Depends which part of the area. We got some areas that changes three times in the same stretch of road. Yeah, we got that here. I know here in town, <laughs> I know here in the city, our average speed is 40, posted 45. Yep. And the lowest I've seen is 35, unless you're in the neighborhood, it's 25. Our highways are 65 and 70. Yeah, our main uh, highways here are 65, 70. Um, some of the county highways are 45, some are 55. The country back roads are 45. Some are posted even lower if they're at like a really dense area at person or those in a short area being like 35. Um, as you're coming into Jim Falls at 45, then drops to 35, and then right past the station drops to 20, or right at the station basically drops to 25. 
Now, do you have any special uh, lighting equipment on your vehicle for law enforcement? No, that oh, you. I got amber. I got amber and white lights on mine. No, okay, so they know you're with somebody. Yep, I got amber and whites on mine all the way around. I got lights all the way around it, and I'll wire it in permanently. Hardwired now, finally. Oh, okay. Uh, real quick, we're in Jim Falls. Where yep. would the station be by any? Okay, chance? keep zooming in on it. Uh, zooming in on what part of Jim Falls? Uh, right where it says the uh, right basically where it says Jim Falls, right there. Just keep zooming in a little bit more. Okay, it. not not the milk factory, milk pro. We're in salted, the station is salted milk factory, a little bit. Oh. Where it says Tenex right there, it's still about block or so. Nope, keep going the other way. This one? Yep, that's the gas station here. Keep going up, keep going down now. So keep moving the map up. Up or down? Okay, right where it says Old Abe Trailhead. Where it says Old right. Abe Trailhead, right across the road right there is the station. And next one door is the town hall. That right, yep, zoom, zoom a little more. Okay. That corner right there. one? That's the station right there. Yeah, well, let's um, see if Google Map View will help us. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going. Yep, there's the town hall. There's the station. Oh, that's the town hall over here. That's the town hall, yep. And that's the station right there. That's my station, yep. Yeah. And door one, your far left door is going to be brush one and squad two. Door two is going to be squad one, ATV one. Door okay, now it's going to be engine one, boat one, portable pump. Door four is going to be tender one and tender two. Now, I have a question. Which one is door one, left or the right one? The very first door to the left is door okay, one. Okay, so this one here is door one. Yep, door one. The only reason why I'm asking at my station, door one is over here. <laughs> So yeah, instead of numbering it from the outside looking in, they number it from the inside looking out. Yeah, we number ours this way for once or four this way as you're looking at it from the road. Yeah, well, I, I'm somewhat kind of jealous. Is that, that what I think it is, the tornado side? Yeah. Do they use that to alert any other volunteers? Hey, we got a call at the fire station? They used to use it all the time that way for calls. Of, and that became a noon only type deal and now it is noon during parade day noon during something else tornado events like that and if we can't get enough people responding and it's a fire we will we'll still set it off to get their butts moving <laughs> oh okay yeah i know i was um curious about that yeah i'm jealous i like your station <laughs> No, I mean, it's uh, it's small, it's cramped, but it does the job. It's... No, no, um, I, I really um like your station, and the only reason why I say that, let me um, one of these days we'll we'll meet in in person somewhere. Uh, you can see how my station somewhat look right there. Yep, but. I mean, it's not that big a station, but I mean, it does the job for being real what we need. You know, it's gets the job done. Yeah. Well, this is an old photo because that 1943 GMC is no longer there. And there's a <laughs> shit over there now. But basically, that's door one, door two, door three. This one will wow. hold a squad. This one holds a type two uh, fire truck. And we have a... Uh, water tender our water tender 1200 gallons yep. our engine is a thousand gallon our squad holds 250 gallons and oh yeah this is all old that's not even there anymore but copy image caption 2011 okay i then started with them <laughs> till uh 2014 but yeah that that engine there is uh, still operational it is being refurbished wow. right now. Well, that's cool. And um, one of our uh, chiefs have it. Um, he took it to uh, refurbish it and everything. Oh, one neat. chief, that, the one chief that was working on it, he um, rest his soul. Um, 
L O D D. Oh. Um, uh, 2019. So, wow, been that long. Okay, but yeah, I know it's kind of fun. It is cramp on the inside yep. of that station there, and uh, so the showing the map of your area that you cover and then some. I mean, you you could see more or less around what I had, desert. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so uh, from all the things that you have done and so forth, and yeah, you've been enjoying doing the fire photography. Oh, loving it. Helping uh, other department. How much work do you guys get? More EMS and fire. Um, I think that's everywhere. Yeah, that, that's it. So it's becoming, it used to be more fire in years back, but now it's more EMS than anything else in combined right now. I would say hands down, EMS is a good two thirds of our calls. And yeah. then the rest are pretty much accident, fires, rescues all combined, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah, because um, like I say, I think that's about everywhere now. You don't yep. get that much structure fires anymore, do you? Uh, we had a close call yesterday where one could have been a structure, but they got there in time to save the structure. Um, otherwise, a lot of our fires now are, depends which area we cover. I mean, Anson, we haven't had a structure since, oh, I think of last year, early last year, I think it was the last structure. Otherwise, ours are pretty much mostly EMS up there now for runs and some fire or fire response calls and accidents, but not very much. Uh, fire district, it's been a lot of medicals. There have been some structure fires, but I mean, a lot of our fire calls and all the burns I cover are mutually to other areas. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, we're doing this one uh, uh, from the pants of our seat. I know this is our <laughs> second interview because we had to kind of fixed the first one they had a whole bunch of glitch but then again yeah. getting off so early in the morning uh it's understandable <laughs> uh let's see um and i like doing things from the pants of my um yeah, that's fun seat. sometimes so what <laughs> makes your department so unique oh anson it's got to be that we're still the old-fashioned volunteer with no pay that way we we're pretty much there to volunteer our time and get back to the community and serve the community me, I love doing it that way. It's fine by me. I mean, I can use all my skills growing up to run the fire service like I have. I can use all my skills up there, pitching and calls and everything, and go up to the meetings, attend the training sessions, and even get hands on with that even at times, which is fun, considering I don't do it in some days because I sit back and do the photos only. But they're uh, insisting I get a little more involved in that if I wanted to. It's like, okay, I'll get more hands on. So I have been a little bit. And then, um, Got issued a uniform shirt this year now. We uh, early in the year, it's like, oh, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we uh, did something else too, and we put you in the roster this year now too. You're in the roster even after all these years, like, oh, so it's it, it's been interesting over my years. The other department, I got a uniform immediately. It's like okay, and I don't make nothing because I work full time, so it's like I don't make nothing for calls except for when I can and. So I, mean, I, I do what I can, do a lot of online training courses right now, just finished number 28 for another one last night, uh, early this morning, for one of my trains I'm doing. It. So I pretty much stay hands on. Uh, most memorable part like that is, is family. They treat me just like family up there, brought my girlfriend on board a little bit, to be up there involved in some stuff even. And, you don't see that in some areas still. I mean, some areas in the country, you don't see it as much. Depends on what's going on. But uh, in some of these areas, we're so family, like the old-fashioned way, which is very nice. And uh, that, that's cool. Now, talking about the uh, girlfriend, <laughs> um, how well does she take it that all of a sudden... You might be at the dinner table and up and gone or a family outing and <laughs> up and gone or Lord forbid you guys happen to be on your way to or from someplace special and all oh, something something pops up. Uh you go and drag her with you. 
Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay, how does she how <laughs> does she handle it? Uh, had I not left when I did that fire, it would have been a little bit bad on my behalf because then it would have been a little more choice words by her. But um, otherwise, it's been fairly decent. You know, like two or three times a year, I drag her to a call like that when the call goes out and it's a type of call that I know I have to go on right away. And she's fine that way, but I mean, otherwise, I, I try to keep it separate from her time to pretty much spend time with her that way as I go on calls. But so she, doesn't, she, doesn't, me, she doesn't kick you out of the house saying, okay, <laughs> I need my me time. Aren't you she don't, to she don't live with me, so don't, she doesn't live with me, so we don't have to worry about that part. <laughs> well, I don't live with my significant others, you know, my, as I will say a lot of times. But I know when I'm on her nerve because all of a sudden she will look at me and go, aren't you supposed to be at the fire station? Okay, got it. Bye. But yeah, then again, that's... I work four days off three, and it's not unusual to find me at the fire station two out of my three days off. Sometime yeah. more, sometime less. Well, me being on two departments, though, I've got four stations combined then, and then the other department that has me a little bit here and there for stuff that makes it like five stations. And so I split my time between one or the other. I mean, each month I have to spend time at two stations. And then if there's special events for the other department, you know, it's another one or two days a year for events. So not that big a deal there. They got an age requirement to join at, at your department? 18 and up. Okay. And that is state law. Well, the reason I'm saying, I know we're at 18, but if you can pass a physical and you're 60, they'll take you. I know in some um, East Coast, you know, um, um, states in Illinois for one of the, uh, being one of them, if you're over 35, just trying to get in, it won't take you. Yeah, here it is. In order to be in the hot zone, basically, you have to be 18 or up, regardless, because of the liability issues. Um, some departments, if you want to be outside, the, like the cold zone, basically, and like an explorer-type deal, 14 to 20, basically, you can just do that kind of stuff. You know, the grab SCBA tanks or grab two left trucks, just bring it to guys at the border of the hot and cold zone. I mean, otherwise, it's it's got to be 18 to be in the hot zone, regardless. So. Okay. So up, if up, I decide to move to your area and deal with the cold instead of the heat, <laughs> and I'm 56, I have a good chance to be in part of the department. Now, uh, you're too old, man. Get out of here. <laughs> well, the voluntary departments right now, we're hurting for help. The voluntary departments that's county, we need the help. No, yeah, okay. So we don't have any big issues that way at all. <laughs> now, do you drive any of the equipment? No. Oh, not yet. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, I know you sent us several photos um, yep. recently, so we're going to go through the new batch that you sent me, and I might look for some of the yep. uh, Some of the photos ones. are a little bit older because I had to do a documentary session now for uh, Ants, and we had a film person come in and did a documentary on us and also Cornell. So I had to put the uh, batch of photographs to use. So one or two of them photographs are actually from that when I put together for it. Okay. Well, before I go into the new batch of photos that uh, you send me, I do want to touch up on this one here. And I know it's going to be kind of weird the way I'm sharing it, but <laughs> I've never done really oh, that's, that's the old station in Halley. That station is no longer there. Some other business owns it now, and the new station is across the road. That station no longer there, but that it's station across is the road. longer there, but the crossroad of the brand new building, new station altogether. But that station right here is the station that my dad was on. My uncle did EMS. My brother started out, and that's where I basically grew up my young age, right there. Oh wow! Okay, so we had a lot of family history in that station. So before the station moved and built the new one, I want to go there and get the photographs, and that's one of the photographs I have over there. It's Oh. I have a photograph that I have. I did not send to you, but I have one. I have to, I may, you might have. I'm not sure. It is the sun setting reflecting on the trucks inside the station in the old station there. I don't think I. Okay, I have um, that. One. Well, you could you could also be. In, um, Let me see. You you, you could uh, do the chair screening too. So. 
Yeah, let me just try and get, yeah, see if I have that picture in this computer or not, or in this flash drive even. <laughs> uh, let me see here. I'm just gonna put that on full screen here quick so I can check it faster. And it's not on the flash drive. I will check on photos here. Um, not seeing it here, right here. Yeah, no, I don't have it. Okay, I'm still checking for it. Just give me a second here to scroll through here quick to look see if I have that one. Not. Nope, it's not in hot. Ah, here we go. We'll see if it comes. Are you seeing this on your end at all? Um, no. Are you doing um share screen? Uh, I'm not sure if it's come up as a shared screen or not. Okay, if you if you go down to the bottom, run your cursor down, you'll see where you have the uh, microphone, the video, who participated, okay. and there should be oh, something. Share screen. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and when you open it up, you got to make sure you click on the right one. Otherwise, you'd be sharing something you don't want to share. Okay, here's the uh, photo. Now, you seen that photo now coming up? No, I got a blank screen on my end. Oh, there it is. Nice shot. That's in the old station there before they moved, you know. And I went in there and took pictures of before they moved, you know, to show the history a little bit involved and growing up before they moved across the road to a brand new station, you know, because I wouldn't get after like that again for different scenes and that was one of the uh, memorable shots I took in that station. That is the old engine one, which has been scrapped now. It fell apart here uh, a year ago, so they had to scrap it all together. The new engine one is parked right next to it. When I took that photo, and the sun was setting just right. Because looking out the doors, you look to the west of that station, and the station was a uh, double bay. So the back was facing east with uh, two bays wide, and the front was three bays wide. So this is looking west end. So the sun was setting in the west and reflected right around the truck that way. And it just made an awesome shot. Yeah, I hope you have that one enlarged and framed somewhere, like at nope, a station. Oh, you, you, you ought to, you know, frame it and put, <laughs> put it up on the walls or even or even at the uh, station uh, headquarters or whatever, you know, where they that's a neat shot. That is a very good shot. Yeah, yeah, I keep that shot in handy in my need to, and because it, it, to me, it, it's a worthwhile photograph to have. Oh yes, yes. And um, let's go to some of the ones that you sent me this time around. Yeah, because I know from the last time I'm watching my time yep. frame here. Don't want to get in trouble with um, little one. <laughs> We all yeah, know I got this yard work for go pick her up. That's, that's why I just got dropped me before I came on. Yeah, so. All right. Um, this one right here, you can see that yep, one, correct? My first, that was my second front page photograph photo right there. That is still to date my largest call of my career. That went to a massive alarm in the county. I mean, that, that was a arson fire. Massive people, uh, massive fire, people were trapped, commercial uh, response. The first floor was commercial upstairs was a residential part. I mean, old downtown structure, you know how those are. And it was a massive, massive, massive fire for that one. That one still is fresh in my mind every stinking year because of how bad that fire was and how big it was and how involved I had to be on that fire and, and everything. It's, because mm. that fire gave me my the most work I ever have had to do on the scene to date still. Since it was on the commercial block, I basically went through. I was directed by the department to help pull LDH from the engine, hook to the hydrant, and get it going. Then go and photograph around the entire half of the block to document every business, every phone number on the businesses that way for what they have for documentation purposes in case. They lost a block. They'd have documentation what was in each building. Uh, the one bringing it further down the block, uh, if it does to the left of the block in the front side, was actually a 
Listen, you don't have that photograph of that one yet. I'm still waiting to get that from the fire chief because I lost it in the last drive that went bad. Uh, is that your historical structure built way, way back when? That's connected in the whole row right there. So I even had to document that sign to show this is what this is. Then I had to come look down the alley to show the pole lines on fire. Then come around the your side of the block to come back around that so that I was not involved by the pole line area for issues and all that. That's 100 and no. Yeah, well over 104, like 800 and 764 or 700 and something photographs of that fire all together from wow. start to finish. I had over five hours just on scene documentation on that fire. I had another hour, hour and a half of downloading, going through organizing. Then I had another hour at station time doing the interview with the media for that fire, with the fire chief himself. Mm. So and that was my largest fire to date in my career still. Yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah, and that that, that looked like uh would that do in the wintertime or no, the summertime? Dead, dead summer. It was oh. almost 80 degrees out and humidity was in the 60s for dew points. Right dead summer and uh just at like 12 or two in the morning. Central time, and I cleared the scene initially at five. Per the fire chief, go home and get some rest. Well, yeah, that didn't quite happen right away. And seven fifteen, got the call to come back and read, uh, document because the media was coming in for interviews already. And so I'm back on the scene, read documented around the front and back again. Then to the station for the media part. And yeah, it was that was a long day. <laughs> yeah. See, you said summer, you know, I will be sadistic on this one and say, yeah, well, welcome a working job like that just to stay warm when you yeah, have August, all that right there on this one August photo 8th, that you sent me. August 8th of 2012 when that fire happened. Uh, August 8th. Well, See, yeah, now, if it would have been like a day like this that you <laughs> sent me, I mean, that's what, four foot of snow piled up right there? Uh, the snow, that's the snow bank at a driveway and by the road. So the snow banks are about four feet high, but there's only about less than a foot in the yards. Oh, uh, <laughs> but, but it was like, cold uh, regardless. Yeah, yeah, it was like 35, 40 degrees out. Yeah, I think the other one, the chief, will be yelling at me. What are you doing? Put the wet stuff on the red stuff. I'm going, uh, <laughs> no, I'm enjoying my desert, 120 degrees plus. <laughs> Yeah, this was the uh, working fire in the city of Chippewa. Anson and Fire District are both called in for mutual aid because uh, they haven't set up for any working fire for a working fire response like that for structures is automatic go to force alarm to bring in the mutual aid for the departments right away from our manpower and help and cover the city that way. Yeah, so so your mutual aid, is that um, auto mutual aid or you have to request them? Nope. The city of Chippewa Falls has it set up for auto mutual aid for any working structure fire that way. Oh, that's that's nice. So you don't have to get, worry about calling it in then. Correct. So anytime they have a confirmed working structure fire in the city of Chippewa Falls, there, whether the police officer gets on scene first or the department gets on scene first, so we have a working fire confirmed. That's automatic mutual aid. So Anson gets called in and Chippewa Fire District Station One gets called in right away. Both. Okay, now that's interesting. Do you say law enforcement? Are uh, some of the law enforcement officers in your area also firefighters, or they're just strictly law enforcement? There is one that I know of that they both. Otherwise, it's pretty much strictly their own. Hmm. No, only reason I'm saying because I know. You pull up, you've had the fire training, you could turn around and say, hey, dispatch, we got a fire, we got smoke showing on the Bravo side or the number two side, depending how you guys yep. label your buildings. And um, we got smoke coming out of the Bravo side. Look like the Bravo Charlie side. We got flames above the roof. Um, which will either put it a two-story, single-story, depending on the height, then you know how tall that fire is. 
Aaron Rowe, you know, can see you all unison compared to somebody walking on and go, the house is on fire. It's fully involved. And you get there. Yeah, there's a trash can outside. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we've had that happen where we've had some fires caught in that way. So, that's, yeah, we know how that goes. <laughs> right. Because yeah, I know, is... because on that one fire that you were showing, yep. some people that's call that. The, that's the back of the structure right there. So that was actually Charlie's side. Okay, so that will where be the, the Charlie's side. Showing, yep, where light is showing in the window there on the left-hand side, that's actually the next structure connected. That would be our Delta side right there. Now, are the building connected or there's a yeah, gap? Yeah, they're connected. They were connected. And on the right-hand side there, you can see windows there too. Right there, up and right above that, that's also structured there connected also. That was that's all a, connected. That whole half a block was connected. Oh, so it's almost like a brownstone railroad type thing where everything's right there uh, yeah. connected. Okay. Yep, so this was the back of the structure right here that's on fire and it spread to the front. Yeah, some people will call that fully involved. I won't call it fully involved because I'm looking at this like, okay, that's yeah. not on. I thought that was all one building, but oh, no, that's, in a way it is. They're all connected. It's considered connected, building, but it's all separate businesses and buildings by address. Right, so they so probably got a firewall in between. Yep, so it's all considered their own building, but yeah, so it's it's considered a um, residential commercial commercial bottom residence on top. Yeah, but to that's, me, that's Charlie Satter at the back of the building. Okay, to me, that will be hey, we got a heavy, uh, heavy fire smoke on division one, division two. Go ahead and give me a second alarm. I have exposure on the Delta and Bravo side. You know, now if the whole thing would have been up and you could see nothing but flame, I know you've seen some of those that. And station one took the falls is three blocks away from the structure. Looked out the window, or no, a correction, it's uh, two blocks away. They looked out the window and could see the fire from the station already in the sky. Uh, and they knew that was trouble. They knew it was trouble because they knew the history of the building. Plus, they'd want ambulance out in the caller at the hospital. So you're two people short immediately from manpower. Oh, wow. And there was reports of people trapped inside because the main egress was the stairway to get in and out. So they had to go through the front stairway to try and get people out that way versus the back because the back, you can't get out of the back then. So yeah, that's the back the right stairways. Hand, yep. So on your right hand side, that right in there has a stairway that was in front that went upstairs from the front to get in to the top then. And that's how they got the people out. So they had to go in from the other building and stairway that were connected to this building to get the people out. Well, I'm going to skip one photo real quick and go straight to this one since we're talking about stairs. Ah, yes. This, now, this is a, a ladder that you guys have, right? That's a platform truck in the city of Chippewa. It's Chippewa Falls Fire and Emergency Services Truck 1. That's their brand new aerial they got 2014. And um, that was right before he left that department and went to Anson, you know, the chief change and stuff by a few months. But... Uh, before the old chief retired, my original chief, he ordered that truck and said, if it comes in before he retires, I'm going up in it. Well, his last day on duty, I got to go up in the truck. And now with the new chief in there, who's allowing stuff again to happen, we had training this year for uh, Anson and with the city of Chippewa Falls Fire Department at the uh, fairgrounds that way. And we hooked our engine one, which you can see in the bottom of the photograph there. We hooked the hose from there to a hydrant and then also from the engine to Chippewa Falls truck one to see if we could go through and, and uh, push the water to their engine to feed their truck that way. Now, so this really one here is your in, um, engine that's one. That's engine one, and that's Anson tender one backed up to their porter tank from the uh, tender right there. Okay. Because a lot of the city guys don't know how to draft for drafting water because they're in the city, you know, so they hook to the hydrant all the time. Right. So we actually set one of our porter tanks there at the back of our engine took our tenders then to the hydrant down the road there. There's a little white area there in the center. There's actually a hydrant right there. So we would fill our tenders there so that okay, we could- in the center. Here, right here, right a little bit, up a little bit, right there. There's a hydrant right over there. Nope, uh -oh. right there. There's a hydrant right there. So we would take both of our tenders over there, fill them up, bring them back and dump them in the porter tank. Well, so if there's we, a hydrant over there, does that mean this here is the hydrant? Yep, there's a hydrant there too, because it's in the city. 
That's the fairgrounds it's in the city. So okay, we're... that's the fairground. So yep. hydrants are not normally that far away from the roadway then. Not normally, no, but since it's in the city and it's the fairgrounds, they have them spaced all a little bit differently then up there. No, oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, they will through and would take our tenders then and fill them up the hydrant there, bring them back to the porter tank. And then they would change drafting from the tank or hydrant time to fill uh, the engine to pump to the uh, truck then for the water. Okay. So this way, not only could our guys do it our way, but also the city personnel could learn how to do it that way. So in case a scenario like that would happen, they would have some training how to do it also. Now, so can't really for both departments that way. Do the water tender have um, a pump on it? Yep. That one has a pump on it. The other one does not. Okay. Okay. So the other one is strictly a support. Well, this one. The other one's pretty much tender only with the, the uh, porter tank. Tender one, which one, is, which is shown here, has a booster reel on the back tailboard there. Okay, so over here. That one has a portable pump hooked in it then because of that. Okay, so the, uh, with this one here, you could hook up directly into um, an apparatus that has a pump and supply the water straight from here to the apparatus without... Well, it's not being a pump on it. It's just a small pump for the uh, booster reel in the back. Oh, see, our water tender that we have, I could dump it into a tank. Yep. Or run a hose from my water tender to an engine and transfer the water from my tender to the engine, and the engine can run off, uh, you know, at that point with um, the water from my tender and so forth. Yeah, we can't do with these. Some depending which department up here you go to, some of their newer tenders are getting pumps put on them, which is nice. So they're actually starting to change over to that now for a lot of departments, but ours are old tenders, so they're they're not set up that way. Hmm. I mean, you're talking 93 and 94. <laughs> well, and let's see, my uh, water tender <laughs> is a 90, my engine is a 95, but yeah. we but we can we can do that. I could basically have the thousand gallon of my engine. Hook up the water tender that is twelve hundred and have a total of twenty two hundred, yeah. And have it flow, you know, from the tender to the engine and the engine out. And if I shut off the um, my pump, I can run one hundred percent the water from the tender into our hose through our engine, bypassing the regulation. I discovered that the hard way. <laughs> No, yeah, uh, we were down. doing a uh, pump. Uh, we were flowing uh, the pump and having fun connecting to uh, the engine and so forth. Did that. We ended up at 2 o'clock in the morning, I think, with an outside fire. We get there's bamboo on fire. Ooh. And there was a lot of um, undergrowth on it. Oh, that's no fun. And we hook up the the water tender to the engine. So in the, in the water tender, we hook up, I think it's a 2,000 gallon, maybe 3,000 gallons. And we went with that one to the engine, which is no 1,000 gallons. Wow. And, um, well, when we did that, I got my tank filled going. So it's filling up my tank. Mm -hmm as I'm discharging it to the firefighter. Well, I saw that, okay, I'm dumping water beneath. I'm standing on sand and now I'm creating my own little quick sand. Mm -hmm. yep. the, the tender is over on the asphalt. My engine, even though it's four wheel drive, it's on the sand. I turn off the fill, I, I turned off the fill tank. So, okay, I got a full tank on mine, so I turn it off not to dump. Well, that's why I said I discovered the hard way. It started pumping through our system. The only thing is it wasn't going through my engine, wasn't regulated. It increased the power on the hose without me knowing it because it went from the tender through my engine, going through the pump system and out to the hose without going through, you know, through the proper... <laughs> thing where I can regulate it. So all my gauges read the same. The only thing is, yeah, I read the same. 
I'm not at the water tender to look at their gate to see that their gate shot up and put it all into the thing. I found out after we put it out. <laughs> he goes, what do you did to increase the pressure? I'm looking at the, what do you mean? All of a sudden, I, I got kicked back and I had a lean heart. Oh, well, when it started dumping, I was like, oh, so you were running the water tender straight. I go, huh? <laughs> no, it was going to the engine. Yeah, but you turned that off, which put the water of the water tender going in, picking up speed on the engine pump and kicking yep. it out to me. But my <laughs> gauge is right. Your gauge is going to read for yours. You weren't looking at the other gauge. <laughs> I went, oops. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> uh -huh. But we put it out. No, well, that works. That's the main thing. Put out the fire. Yeah. No. That was my original department where I all started Triple Falls Fire and Emergency Services. This was uh, back before the chief retired. That's Chief Tom Larson, now retired. And the engine and the uh, cab of the truck one is uh, Dr. Dixon, who was the medical director at the time for the department. He is now. Oh, okay. I see him right there. Yep, he's with now with another agency, but still keeps in touch with us primarily for us and for us, you know, who are considered like the old timers who've been here for a long time. Just call him up and he'll some, still come and take care of stuff for you to help behind the scenes a little bit and stuff like that, which is great. Okay. I mean, that's that was the uh, last main photo I had of the chief for retired. This picture here is just from uh, training this month in Anson. We did. Uh, Packaging a patient, different scenarios, getting ready for a uh, hunting season, which starts this past week and here started on Saturday for a uh, bull season. So we did a different packaging a patient, different scenarios, and got our ATV up to trailer and actually used that for like only the second or third time for this type of training now to do it in a nice weather condition and oh, stuff okay. like that. So we had some of our new members who have only been there a year or less actually there that night. So they have to get to see what we're doing and help out. And the one that's hopping up there that's blurred is actually one of our new members that joined last year, who's actually a doctor. So this has got you good for him in a way too to get hands-on training that way for how we're doing it. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed your little unit there got tracks on it. Yep, it came with tires, but we ordered tracks and put tracks on it right away. Yeah, ours only got tires, uh, and we used that for uh, uh, ours for uh, out in the brush. I kind of like the track idea. Yeah, it's about three or two to three years old now. It's a nice, very brand, very, very new unit. I mean, we bought it new, and it's only been on, what, two fires? But it's got no tank and pump on it. It's just this EMS uh, body. So basically, it's used just for, uh, if we're going to go to fire, just toss back ends in the back and your hand tools and take a couple personnel in there and that's it. So it's pretty much a support vehicle on the fire way for big brush fires. Yeah, we got a skid on ours where we could pull off the uh, the uh, the pumps and all that and slide in the EMS. Yeah, see, we didn't do that. We went through body a slide in EMS unit because a lot of our calls now are more medical than anything else. And we've actually a lot of medical off-road, so it's like we needed something to do that way to get patients out, so that's where we did that. Ah, that's a new photograph from this year's Sturgeon Fest at the uh, Demo Derby night number two, which was the uh, parade day after the parade is over. And that is uh, two of our firefighters right there and, uh, on standby right now watching for fires. We got the extinguishers out and the whole line pulled. And oh, that's a uh, very fun event every year, trust me. <laughs> mm. Only three fires and two medicals this year during the event up there, right on the ground. It's like, man, that's a busy year. Oh, okay. So that looked like that looked like fun. Oh, now, we, that, now that's one of your fire hoses, right? That's we have a uh, it's actually four sections hooked together to make one long hose the whole length of the track, hooked directly to our engine at the moment, yes. So if something catches fire on that drag. You guys are not going to use all those extinguisher you grab the fire hose, I hope. We had 10 extinguishers there, and those are our first primary first units, and then grab the hose if need be. If the extinguishers can't put out the fire, then it goes right to the hose. See, I probably used the hose before I used these for the mere <laughs> fact that uh, you only got five. <laughs> we had 10 up there with us. Oh, okay. 
We had temp or what? We had five right there. We had five on the other side of the engine ready to go. Because mm -hmm. I was on one of the uh, extinguishers myself on standby to help run them for support to the members if they needed it. So. <laughs> now, do you guys call in somebody to recharge your fire extinguisher, or you guys do it there on? No, at we the station? take them out. We have one of our members grab the uh, old squad truck and take it down to the you know, uh, Eau Claire, Steve Eau Claire, the salt of uh, Chippewa, about 12 miles, down to an agency down there that actually does the uh, fire extinguisher units themselves that recharge them and sell them and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, because um, we, if we use our extinguisher, we go to the warehouse, exchange it for a new one, and the county had somebody contracted to come out and service all all of them so mm -hmm. it's like we used to we got to go to the training and go hey we need a new extinguisher and they'll swap it out yeah we only use extinguishers like once a year for that many extinguishers and that's for the demo derby so two days a year for derbies and that's it oh that was during the parade that is cadet fire and rescue is engine one brand new engine that one just set history for me uh, this year. I photographed the last year they took delivery. The Delhi Manufacturing Company on you know, Delhi Pumps requested some of the photographs I took of it because I did not supply them in time. Delhi rep reached out to me. I submitted eight photographs. Come January, found out, yeah, they made the shift counter for the year for Delhi, which goes to all their clients worldwide this year, you know. And, so my first ever major publication, thanks to Kadat, and I especially requested that you went for the parade this year to respond over for us for the parade. And right to the chief myself, I asked him when he stopped at work and like, yeah, I want this truck in this truck or this truck in this truck. And if that one possible, you know, and so that day of the parade, I'm staying at the station and here comes the brush truck. I'm like, okay, I requested that. Here comes the tender, I requested that. And also in the engine, I'm like, oh, and the chief was driving. I'm like, oh, thank you, chief. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the uh, one of the fire personnel from Kadat, who's actually the uh, fire inspector over there, Eric Wyland. His relative was actually chief two of our Anson department. He was also a battalion chief in the city of Chippewa, Trevor Wyland. And that's oh. the uniform for the first time at Sturgeon Fest and for parade day by our squad one, which is four years old, our newest squad truck. Yeah, they keep talking we're supposed to get one of these at my station. Oh, of course, I, they've, been ta they've been talking really about it since 2014. See, our squads up here have no water on. That truck is strictly uh, squad EMS type only. So we have our water rescue, our rope rescue, our uh, some of our extrication tool batteries on there. Medical supplies, I mean, all that kind right. of stuff, all that unit. See, ours uh, have all that plus water and a pump. Yep, ours don't over here. And, and in California, have, they call that a patrol here. They call it a squad. Yeah, I know. Every area is different. And this is during the parade. Uh, that picture. My bad. Hit the wrong. That picture is during the search for parade this year. That's a phone shot us looking through the mirror. And that's uh, one of the tenders right behind us in the parade route going down the main drag of Kadat, which is actually County Highway S. We start at the dairy and go all the way down County S, down to the fairgrounds at the uh, Jim Falls fairgrounds there. So you're talking a mile and a half, maybe. So it's the whole stretch that way. So pretty hot, you throw the parade, I take pictures through the windshield or put my hand out facing forward and get pictures with the camera or with my phone. and. I also do like what I call trick shots that way and face the camera to the mirror that way and try and face backwards to get some photographs that way versus trying to hang out the window and do it the other way. Which I kind of like photos like that because I've taken one like that where I did like a uh, PSA with it. Like look at your mirrors where I took a, a chop because I happen to have an engine coming up, lights and siren look at my mirror and I have my camera um, uh, set um, and I took a shot of it and when I got home and look at it you don't see them on the big mirror you see them in the little blind spot mirror so I, I use it as a PSA <laughs> like pay close attention to your mirrors object closer yep. than what you think you don't see it on the big one but you see it in a line where he's yeah. coming up he's rolling up on you yeah, because we can see it 
some of the times at first they weren't sure how it was going to be when I started doing that. But then after I started doing more photographs like that for some different ones, then they just started liking them and loving them and like, oh, we like that photo and this is great. And so it but works. There is the calendar shot right there. I remember you sent it to me from the um, last, um, yep. from the first interview. The That's why I went looking for it. Yeah, there's the calendar shot. Yeah. Now, Darley, you, if I remember correctly from our first interview, it was, um, it's not too far from where you're at, down the street, basically. Yep, their uh, pump manufacturing warehouse is in Chicago, Illinois, and their main headquarters is in Illinois. But all the trucks are assembled right up here in Chippewa Falls. Okay. So we actually have two huge buildings up here, and they do the whole design process up here and everything, and then the pumps are assembled in Chicago and shipped up here, and then everything is all fully assembled right up here in Chippewa Falls. Yeah, because I remember from our first um, conversation, but I said, oh, yeah, I would have to go play at that location. <laughs> Oh, I this love is it. your engine one, correct? Yes, yes, engine one, correct. That was a, a nighttime training here a few years back. And yeah, nice time, yeah. It's a nice engine. I've been at the uh, learning to pump a little bit now in the last couple of years off and on. Once or twice a year, I get a refresher on how to do the pump, but I don't operate it, so I never remember it, which happens. Right. Now, this the aerial from. I don't know how to start though. <laughs> Now, that's the uh, aerial that you were telling me about. Uh, yep. That's truck one with Chief Larson before he retired. That was his last day on duty. And that's when I took the photograph after I went up or before I went up in the air that day to get training on it. Yeah. I had and, the old snorkel they had that this replaced. And then he said, if he gets it before he retires, I'm going up in it. Well, that was his last day on duty. And I got the full run down on that truck. And when they took delivery, I actually happened to go to the station the day they took delivery of it. And got to help load her up the LDH and help install the LDH on top of the truck, even. Because it's stored up on the upper right hand side and back back there. And under the uh, ladder, right, like basically next to the uh, ladder that way, on the top is the storage for their LDH under. So it's, it was a whole new experience because I've never even done that to put on the uh, area before. So it was a whole new experience to me that way, too. Yeah. Well, and I, I got know. to help spec that truck for some of the specs under. So it's really nice. And let me hit up uh, one or two more photos before we okay. call uh, before we call it, uh, because I'm looking at the time here. But we'll we'll be talking behind the scene here shortly. Uh, so let me bring up this one photo here. Oh, that was earlier this year. A structure fire downtown Triple Falls commercial structure connected uh, buildings in both sides of it. Uh. And so this building that, connected to it and this building connected to it? Right or there's the something here connected. that I don't there's see? Something. There's another building back right there, too, connected in the back side there, yep. So oh, there's actually okay. four buildings there connected. It's like a little parking area between that one on the left and one on the fire there. There's a little parking area behind that's the uh, building that's connected. Yeah. yeah now, that, 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 was a that thing is just fire. Yeah. Now that fire there is not this fire here, correct? No, this was a okay. This is a barn fire a number of years back right now. That was went to a uh, Mabus alarm for mutual aid box assignment to, for trucks, and manpower, water, everything. A nice early morning fire, and that's actually one of my most memorable photos I've taken over the years because with them all smoke that way, and you know, the trucks lined up the way they are, and the lighting just right, and that fire for it was like he was kind of like silhouetted that way. And, Awesome photograph. Oh, oh, okay. Well, and I actually went to the fuel site because I had training him three weeks prior at that fuel site out there. And that was the first time I was on the one department before I left and then came back now. But so I went right to the fuel site first, helped fill tenders right away because they didn't have enough manpower to do that at the fuel site. And the other departments that were called for portable pumps, they were having issues with the pumps working. So I went to the fuel site where one of the engines. Helpful tenders for almost an hour and then went to the scene after that. And now, this all is these are tenders? Trucks, tenders and squad trucks lined up for Mampor. So you got one unit there, one there, one there, there, then there. Then, nope, right behind that, between those two is another tender. Between this one and this one? Yep, there's another tender between the two of them, yep. 
Oh, so that's not that's not part of this tender. That's another oh, that's one right there. Tender tender. Then the one behind that, no, is a squad. And then behind that's a tender. That's a squad. That's a squad, and then behind that's another tender. And then, then another, that one. Now between the two of them is another tender also right there. Nope. Down a little more. Over to your right to tack. Right there's another tender. Yep, right there. That's another tender. And we got C2 over here. Yep. There's actually four lined up there, plus a squad on that side, too. Behind So the, all this is smoke, then? That's all smoke. That was a massive barn fire. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I know we're running, uh, getting close here on time. Uh, what's the biggest challenge that your department faces, and how do you guys overcome it? I always say it's gonna be for manpower during daytimes or manpower in general, depending on which department you're at, because EMS is gonna hard to find anybody to go on EMS calls for uh, the one department for paid because we can't keep personal because people just have other jobs or don't want to do the time anymore and stuff. Then the other department is gonna be manpower for EMS during daytime because being a volunteer parent, you know, first responders, they got daytime jobs they do and to pay the bills and they just can't up and go anymore like in the past you know and so it's primarily manpower 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 is so, the primary but, big thing so basically there's nothing protecting you guys from leaving your job and going to a fire call since you're all volunteer firefighters correct the state of wisconsin did pass a law and all that if we're on a call and then the department sends a sheet with us then the deployer cannot fire us for it Oh, that's good. That way, but otherwise, we cannot leave the call to go. You know, depending on which whose employer you are, a lot of the employers aren't like they used to be in the past, where you could pass to go, but no, they're not. You can't go anymore. Oh, so I know we. Do, I do know we have a state law here that um, uh, basically, since I'm a volunteer firefighter, and I did the crossover and join in 2014. No, I still do photography when I can. But at the uh, state law, I have to let my potential or employer know that I'm a volunteer firefighter. Then on that same law, it's tell the employer, you can't touch them. I'm just summarizing it. And if you do, you got to pay $5,000 plus. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh, wow. So. I think you need a little more grit to that one. <laughs> hmm? I think they need a little more grit. They should up that to 10000 <laughs> Well, yeah, but in a way, I, I think it's pretty neat. I know in the United States, about 70% are volunteer. are volunteers. I think in the state of Nevada alone, it's 80% <laughs> because we're well, so Kansas rural. Is, well, it's 70%. Yeah. Nationwide, 70% of all firefighters are volunteers. Yeah. But in some states, I think those numbers are higher. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, let's see. Yeah, if somebody wants to get into the fire ground photography nowadays, what would you suggest for them to do? It, it's hard to get into it these days versus my guy know my guy knows a lot easier but nowadays it's gonna be a lot harder to get into it um you gotta know some people to get into it basically in all these days up here because always you're not gonna have any luck getting their own anything to get cooperation from areas or nothing and in some areas law enforcement will stop you or somebody on the fire scene will stop you in between you pretty much have to know people and all around here to get involved in it mm. Yeah, I, I do know here our law enforcement does a crowd control, and their idea of a crowd control is half a minimum half a mile down the street, <laughs> and they'll put a, and they'll pull it up the yellow tape. Actually, I call it half a mile, but it's about uh, a quarter, or depending where it is, it's going to be the whole block. Where even the media has a hard time getting into unless you got a good zoom. Yeah, around here you get closer unless you're out in the countryside and where trucks have to get priority over anything, and then it'd be half mile to a mile for the next intersection. And for media, yeah. even to get zoomed, and they got to get permission to come up. I mean, if it's in the city, you should have to cross the road unless they start interfering too much. Then it's 
Yeah, see, so here you can only go up to basically where the yellow tape is, unless you got other credentials and um, yeah. to get past it. But yeah, and the yellow tape go across the sidewalk too. And if it's like at a shopping center, it's going across that shopping. Yeah. So yeah, they they keep you apart compared to LA area where crowd control set up by law enforcement. The building is right in front of you and he's right next to the building so you can basically walk up to the building they're like have fun (laughs) (laughs) here they treat it like it's a murder scene (laughs) yeah that can be in sometimes yeah all right um hold on ron we'll talk to you on the background let me go ahead and close this out ladies and gentlemen this has been the second interview with ron briggs of Wisconsin, beautiful green, cold Wisconsin during the wintertime when it's all white. Uh, fire ground, fire photographer. Thank you for um, doing the interview today. Thank and um, be safe. And with 